So if you were going down to the gym today, you are in for a big surprise, mostly because you're probably going to come across one of these exercises and you're going to want to do them. So if you care about my opinion, if you don't, hello, mum and dad, thanks very much for watching. But honestly, there's just five exercises that given what I see in the fitness palace of love, I don't really think anybody should bother with. And number five is the face pull. Now look, the face pull is a very effective exercise and one that is massively important because it is going for your rear deltoids. And as we know, every single person that goes into the gym does not want to work their rear deltoid. I understand why. All the other deltoids are fine, but when you get to the ones in the back, screw that. But the reason I don't think you should bother with it is because nobody can do it correctly. Absolutely no one. And this isn't a problem. Like, it's not a massive issue. It's just the gym. It's not like the world is all of a sudden going to end. But you do see people trying to do it. And sometimes people are pulling it down to their chest. Sometimes people are pulling it to their ear. Sometimes people are pulling it to their face, which, surprise, surprise, is the correct way to do it. But then it gets even worse because everybody obviously is obsessed with lifting heavy. That's all anybody wants to do in the fitness palace of love when you're trying to do that on the face pool you see people in just the most bizarre positions like there's a leg in the air they're trying to straddle the machine <laughs> sometimes they're just smacking their head into the rope they're trying to use and i just glare over and i'm like you know there's other things you can do to work your shoulders i think you should probably do them and that's something that i think we can all take on right if you are genuinely struggling with an exercise either go and ask somebody for help learn and educate yourself and lift less weight until you do get the form right or if it just doesn't work for you. If it just doesn't click, get rid of it. Throw it out the window. Flush it down the toilet. Shoot it in the head. The biggest problem that I see is people go, well, I can't get big and I can't get drugged if I don't do face pulls. That doesn't make any sense. Ultimately, your body doesn't know that you're doing face pulls. Your brain doesn't know you're doing face pulls. Are we doing face pulls? It just knows that you're trying to activate stimulus in a certain muscle and there's more than one way to do that. So seriously, out of every single exercise there is, I think there was like some kind of ranking of poor form. This would be right at the top of the list. No one can do it. So as the title says, just don't bother with it, but please, for the love of every Thing, work your rear delts. Do rear laterals or something. Number four is the way to curl. Now, this also ties into YouTube, and I just want to say that I like Athlean X. I think Athlean X's channel has likely helped millions of people, I suppose, and he comes across like a very good dude. However, he is an influencer, right? And the problem with influencers, no matter how big or how small, is they will say something, and the person listening to said information will go, Oh, that's what I've been doing wrong. Oh, I didn't realize. So, as soon as Athlean X talked about the way to curl, because the way to curl is actually optimal for targeting more effectively the long head of the biceps. All of a sudden, every single person that went to the gym decided, when it comes to working my biceps, I'm just going to do the weighted curl. All of a sudden, no one was doing bicep curls. No one was doing concentration curls, spider curls, any kind of a curls. It was just the way to curl. And that is not a good way to try and work your bicep. Like, you don't want to get rid of the traditional ones. Like, there's a reason the barbell curl, for example, or the dumbbell curl, has been around for as long as it was. And that's because it worked back in 1950. It worked in 1960, 70, 80, 90, 2000, 2010, up into your 2020s. And like I say, this is the massive issue with it. People think, oh, is this is the secret. This is the secret. If I do weighted curls every single day, I'm going to have massive arms. No, there is so much more to it than that. And ultimately, it's still a curl. I've said this on other videos. If you love the bicep curl more than anything in the world and you just want to do that all the time, do it. But the reason I don't think you should bother with a weighted curl is that nobody is doing right. Nobody. Once again, people go way too heavy. They're putting way too much pressure on other joints that aren't even anything to do with their arm. Also, don't forget how gravity works, right? It's pushing down. So sometimes people are holding it out here. I'm like, man, you're shoulders, your poor deltoid, they are about to be crushed. So I suppose this also comes back down to ensuring that your form is what you classify as the most important part of any kind of exercise in the gym, because it is, by the way, otherwise you will get injured. There was somebody in my gym the other day, you could just see all they were going to do was weighted curls. And I don't want to be that guy, but it was bad form. <laughs> It just was. They didn't film them or anything like that. Because that's not what we do. We don't want to be disrespectful here. But the way to curl, like all of these other random brand new exercises that pop up, is not the be all and end all, right? You haven't been doing anything wrong. This hasn't been some kind of magic trick that's been hidden from you. It's just another way to do it. And sure, if you can incorporate it into your routine and you can figure out a way where it works for you and you really feel it in your biceps, awesome. And I'm going to ask this question. I would imagine a lot of people watching this have tried it in the past. Like, oh man, why does my back hurt so much? Because you're doing it wrong. That's why. You're putting the stress on the wrong part of your body. So once again, just get rid of it. There is so many curl exercises you can do far easier, far more straightforward, and you don't have to overthink it. Put your music on, kick some ass. And number three is sit-ups. And the reason I want to talk about sit-ups, even though sit-ups have been talked about since like 1210, no idea what was going on in the year 1210, but I know that people were doing sit-ups, is because sit-ups do not equal abs. I get this question a lot, especially on my Instagram, cheap plug, Cyber 316 thank you very much. That's not how abs work. You can get abs without going to the gym, right? If you sort your diet out and you get your body fat percentage down to whatever's going to work for you, usually sub 10 but it can be different for
for lots of people. Some people at 15% you can see in their abs, you're still going to have abdominal muscles. Because don't forget, your abdominal muscles are there. Otherwise, you'd just be like some floppy fish on the floor. Now, why we're so obsessed with the sick back, I don't know, but we are. But you still see people just doing copious amounts of sit-ups every single day and thinking to themselves, well, why can't I see my abs? Because you're eating too much. And maybe you're not doing enough cardio and you're not in a calorie deficit. That's it. Now, of course, doing sit-ups will make your abs a bit stronger, much like anything that you do in the gym. And maybe it will give them more form. And maybe they'll look a bit better when you are able to strip away the fat. But they are not building up the muscle so much, so they kind of push through the skin and then you can see them. And I do believe this is what some people think. And look, it's okay. There's only one way to be educated and learn about these things, and that's to find out. But I just don't want you to waste your time. So honestly, don't even bother with a setup. There's so many other better things you can do. Make sure you're working your core, because your core is going to help you with all of your lifts, especially your big lifts like the bench press and the deadlift and the squat, etc., etc. But sit-ups are a waste of time, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, do I do sit-ups? Absolutely not. And number two is the dumbbell fly. Now, this isn't anything against the fly movement in general. Big fan of like a cable crossover, or you could do it on a machine, and you can do it with dumbbells. Of course you can. Once again, it's been around since the dawn of time. But people have once again forgotten that if you hold a heavy weight here, and you hold a heavy weight here, and then you're coming up, think of all the other things that come into play with your body in order so you don't fall apart. I mean, your shoulders, your triceps will be doing some stuff. Once again, there'll be some core stability. I don't understand why people lay down to do a dumbbell fly, and they're not particularly big, which is fine. It's all relative to, to you, as long as you're in good shape and heading towards your goals, you're absolutely smashing it. But they won't be particularly big, and they'll grab 35 kilogram dumbbells. Don't know what that is in America. 70 pounds, maybe? And they'll try and do it. And as soon as they get to the bottom part of the lift, they're struggling. I'm just, once again, it's always the shoulders, man. Shoulders will go on you like that. But I'm looking at their shoulders going, they're about to crack. Because think about, not only do you have gravity pressing down on you, you're then trying to hoist this up to work your chest, but you're not at all. Because you've come so far down. Do it on a damn cable machine, right? Once again, perseveration and perseverance, I suppose, or not getting injured, right? Preserving yourself so you can train later in your life has to be the most important thing. Otherwise, you are going to be a sad panda. You do not need to be lifted in copious amounts on a dumbbell fly. You just don't. It's far too dangerous for most people. I'm not talking about super duper advanced lifters. You know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. More power to you. I love you from the bottom of my tootsie toe. But I see it in most gym sessions that I go to. In the gym, people are doing this. You can just get rid of it. Like I say, there are machines you can use. There are cable machines you can use. I know it's impossible to get on the cable machines. But if you start treating the dumbbell fly as your last resort, and when you do do it, maybe opt for like a 15 kilogram as opposed for the 31, I promise you, not only are you going to get better time on tension, your form is going to be better, but it's actually going to be better for your chest as well. Not everything has to be, you want to be intense, right? But not everything has to be a fight. <laughs> That's why I think people think they have to go in there and fight the weights. No, make the weights work for you, right? And again, push it and find that energy and do all of those things. But don't put yourself in a position where all of a sudden you're under undue stress. Because eventually something will go, then you're going to be at the gym, and then you're just going to be upset. And nobody wants to be upset. Have you looked out the window? Life is hard enough. Number one is anything you're doing on one leg. I mean, honestly, one leg squats, one leg lateral raises, one leg barbell curls, one leg hammer curls, one leg skull crush. Why do it on one leg? What do you think this is trying to achieve? Now, sure, it would probably instigate and trigger off your core a little bit, but there are actual exercises that will work your core specifically. It's like magic tricks again. You don't need to like go, ha ha, I've got you core, and now all of a sudden you're going to have to kick into gear. No, just work your core. Your core will be happy to be worked. Let me go around your nan's house for dinner. Oh, I'd love to have you for tea, little Jimmy. She's over the moon. She wants to see you. She wants to cook you some potatoes. Don't do anything on one leg. Like, let's just take the bicep curl because we've talked about it a little bit. If you do the bicep curl on one leg, and I mean, you see people doing it with both hands. This isn't like one hand and one leg or anything like that. You are just asking to be injured because you're going to be off kilter you're going to be off balance your brain's not going to know what's going on and you're not going to be able to train hard on your bicep because i don't know 50 60 percent of your whole chemical makeup is don't fall down don't fall down if you just want to stand on one leg in your own personal time do it that's a great fun way to <laughs> to see the clock pass by the time but this is just the stupidest thing i've ever seen do not bother with it and if anybody tells you to do it i'm not going to say they're wrong because i don't know their reasoning but i'm going to say from everything i know and everything i've read and everything i've seen it's utterly stupid and they're wrong <laughs> I don't think you should do it. Put two feet on the ground, be safe, and be stable. Why is this such an underrated thing when it comes to the fitness palace of life? Do you want to get injured? If you do, more power to you. Then yes, smash that one-legged thing. Otherwise, again, take both of your damn soles of your feet, 
plant them on the floor and feel sturdy. Because when you feel sturdy, you feel like a building. When you feel like a building, you're absolutely going to smash it. I'm sure there are some other exercises as well like this, so please do debate them in the comments below. And if you have the pros and the cons for any of the ones I've talked about, I'd love to hear them too. It's all about having a conversation, but be nice. Sometimes you get these crazy people. We don't need any of that, but we'll get them anyway. Also, GrillaMind.com for us as Simon. You can Simon get 10% off. There's brand new flavors for GrillaMind and Nitric at the moment, Pina Colada. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you can get it. Otherwise, anything you get there, use code Simon to get 10% off, especially their energy drinks that rock. Otherwise, what can you do? You go to Patreon.com for us as Simon to 316. You can get me on Cameo, search for Simon Miller, personalized video messages. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Simon to 316. And I have merchandise, pro wrestling tees, and Sansman Athletics. All the links are in the description below. So if you are feeling very, very fruitful today, I would appreciate you massively. But otherwise, don't do those five things unless you really, really do think they're benefiting you. It's not going to make a difference overall. As long as you're being intense and your diet is on point and you are dedicating yourself to the gym, you're going to get to where you need to be. Sometimes it takes six months. Sometimes it takes six years. And nobody wants to hear that, but you just don't know. Take it day by day. Make sure you're documenting everything. And soon you'll have a massive smile on your face. Goodbye.